Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with Hollow Point Firearms and uh, today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, our worst case scenario number three out of the six of my um, six real worst case uh, scenario possibilities. Uh, now if you guys have seen the video where I talk about the six different scenarios that I feel like could possibly happen. Um, then you know which one's coming up. Uh, it's kind of a, a touchy one for me, but uh, I'm going to go with it anyway because it's the right thing to do. And uh, that would be for the government to take over and impose martial law. Now, before we get started on what I think could happen, Let's talk a little bit about history. Do a little bit of a history lesson real quick. Uh, right now we're living what's called the revolution. And the revolution started back in April of 1775. And uh, that's when the uh, Revolutionary War began. Now, if you're familiar with the Revolutionary War, which every American uh, should be, but uh, if you're familiar with the Revolutionary War, you'll know that it was um, brothers and sisters, I wouldn't say sisters, brothers and uh, fathers and sons uh, fighting against each other, British on British. And, uh, you know, if, if anybody's been in school at all, you know, they've heard the story of Paul Revere riding and the militias and all that stuff, but basically um, what the American British people, but that's what I'm going to call them, American British, because they were the ones that were already in America. They had started developing the colonies and uh, we were very prosperous and uh, there was a lot of resources here and uh, basically uh, the uh, the king was uh, getting mad that he wasn't getting any of the money from the resources that we had here in America. So he sent the, at the time, was the world's greatest army over to fight his own people and to try to take back control of the uh, American colonies. So, long story short, there's a lot of history that's involved in it, but in April of 1775, the Revolutionary War began. The first shots were fired. And they were fighting, uh, like I said, brother against brother, father against son, and uh, son against father, families against each other. Um, but, all in all, Obviously, because we live free in America now, the war was won by the uh, American Brits, and we are now free Americans because of it. That's where we get our freedom from, and we currently live in what's called the Revolution because of their sacrifice. As each day passes, um, the government, the United States government, tries to take more and more of the control away from the American citizens. As much as I would like to blame it on the government, um, I think it's just as equally uh, to blame, or just as equal to blame the American people. We have became complacent and careless and selfish and uh, we have really taken for granted what we have on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, it really bugs me. It, it, it really bugs me. But, you know, we have the Constitution, and the Constitution was designed to protect the people from the government. But if the people are too lazy and too lax and don't care enough to uphold the Constitution and, and show the government that we are a free country and that we're in charge, then it's 
it's going to turn into uh, just another government owned nation or government ran nation even more so than what it already is today so the likelihood of, of the government takeover or martial law is extremely high um, just to give you kind of an idea of what it would be like if you go back and watch some videos on uh, what happened during Hurricane Katrina when they shut the roads down and, and didn't allow American citizens to leave and go to another place, uh, someplace safe and healthy. They wouldn't allow them to leave. They locked them in concentration camps um, and called them federal emergency management shelters. Uh, that's martial law. When you put military on these streets and you tell the military, hey, take control of these American citizens, that's martial law. And that's unconstitutional. And it's against everything, everything that was designed in the Constitution by our forefathers. But um, as far as preparation for it goes, I would say, uh, you know, there's not really a good way to prepare for a government takeover. The best way to prepare for a government takeover is to prevent a government takeover. Get involved uh, with something and show the government that we care about our country and that we care about the Constitution. We care about the men who died for the freedom that we have now. And uh, because it's, it's those people who died protecting our freedom that make us the country that we are. So I guess to kind of sum it up, without dragging it on and on and saying the same stuff over and over is the best preparation is prevention and uh, you know stand up for it because if we don't take a stand and stand up against the government and stand up against um, or stand up for our constitution and our rights if we don't stand up for it stand up against them then we're going to be in another revolution, uh, rev another revolutionary war. Uh, and uh, I would hate to see the day when that happened. Because I swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. And then it goes on to read, to obey the orders of the President and the officers appointed above me. But first, and I don't know about you, but the way I was taught, you know, priority is on top usually. Usually when you get a memorandum or something, the most important thing's not at the bottom of the page, it's at the top of the page. And that oath that I swore to said that I would support and defend the Constitution first against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Now I'm not saying that the government's an enemy, because the government's not supposed to be an enemy. They're supposed to be an ally with the people. And I'm not saying that I'm trying to overthrow the American government trying to say that I'm, I'm here to support and defend the Constitution, that I swore an oath that I would support and defend, and I encourage you to do the same, but uh, as far as another revolutionary war goes, uh, I'd hate to see the day when it happened, because my brothers that I fought with in the Army, in the military, more than likely, some of them are still going to be in the military. And I don't want to have to stand up against them. But uh, we have to stand up against the fact that our freedoms and our rights and our liberties are being taken away day by day. So uh, that's my uh, ideas for preparing for worst case scenario number three, a government takeover or... or for the government to implement martial law. Like I said, not really a way to prepare for it, but there is something that you can do now, and there's ways that you can prevent 
um, those things from happening. So I urge you to take a stand and do what you can. Um, but anyway, guys, that's, uh, that's all for this video. Uh, until next time, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe, and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later.